Hello. So, in some pale way of thanking people for providing information about the Benz 123 cruise control problems, of which I guess everyone who owns one has some, I thought I'd just post a little something that I wasn't able to find, and that's how it is that you disassemble the actuator. So, this is the unit I have. The notion is that the actuator motor shouldn't draw more than 160 mils. This one draws more, so I kind of wanted to know academically why. Since I didn't care much if I destroyed this thing, I worked around the planned obsolescence protection mechanisms to tear this thing apart. I'll try to just uh, show you what I did in case you want to destroy your unit also. Anyway, cover comes off. Motor is held on the back of the unit. Like, uh, so with three small screws. There's also an aluminum casting pin that's bludgeoned off there. I managed to shear it since I didn't even notice. You could drill it out. Inside the motor housing is the permanent magnets, the bushing on the end, holding the armature in place there. The armature stays with this unit, which is part of the problem. The solenoid there is held in place with two screws. One is obvious sitting there. The other one is hidden inside this little area there by a little metal plate which is and then the housing is bludgeoned so you can't get the plate out of there It'll, I drilled a hole in the plate uh, found that the screw was under there figuring pull that out and that allows you to pull the solenoid out so that's the first sort of hidden thing in there you got to sort of sort out this freeze plug here which is just basically some glued up thing I don't know what that buys you there's nothing under it except the back of the solenoid plate. Once you've done that, the armature is sitting in there and the brush holder holders here are hidden underneath the circuit board tucked in that slot there, writing a commentator. In order to get this thing out of there and therefore the armature, you face a couple of issues, the first of which is that there are three uh, aluminum casting pins that come up through the circuit board from the casting and are bludgeoned over to hold the circuit board down. You have to drill those out. There aren't any traces near those things, so you don't think there's any fear of destroying your circuit board that way. You can't, of course, pull this whole thing out of there with this situation here, this wire, which is held in place with this first stage grommet in that little s smaller milling inside there, and then the second larger grommet filling the whole cavity there, and then that's all um, that's all held in place by this um, retaining seal much like a metal ball bearing seal so you have to carefully pry that out you know all of this is kind of compromising the waterproof nature of it or something but so once you do that you can pull this uh, circuit board up carefully not to damage your brushes 
And then you'll find the armature sitting in there like that with these two shims there uh, held in place with this tiny circlip. I don't know if you can see that. On the motor shaft uh, just below the worm gear. So you got to pry that out carefully and I tried to tried my best to lose it but I haven't so far. Anyway, that's that. Taking impedance measurements of the armature on the armature that drew almost two amps, uh, I was getting a few figures that seemed to make some sense, but not so much. On a working armature, you should get apparently about nine ohms on the 180 test. From segment to segment uh, on the armature that didn't work. Uh, Uh, all the segments were just basically a little low, a little over an ohm. On the working armature, more like one eight, one one seven. Except <clears throat> for one group <clears throat> with my arbitrary numbering system, so who knows which group? Uh, one segment to another adjacent segment somewhere in the armature was at sixteen ohms. As to the uh, phenomenon people seem to be referring to as crunchy, my actuator is crunchy sounding, I think what that has to do with is the mesh between the, uh, the worm drive gear there on the motor shaft and it's asso the associated plastic gear there. It seems that the crunchy sound has to do with this gear uh, in this position, not the engaged position, still kind of rubbing on its drive gear. As you can see, it's in the disengaged position, but it's still sort of it's still sort of trapped on the worm gear there. So when you run this thing by itself without this solenoid engagement, you get this drag. I did. You'd think that would. Uh, create a bunch of sh plastic shrapnel inside here, but that's not what I discovered. I actually don't know if there's a circumstance in this cruise control system where this motor is running by itself without the actuator. I guess I was assuming there is, but I don't know. I haven't actually seen the same function in the car yet. Um, but uh, uh, you can adjust the, to some extent, the uh, position of this gear in relation to this drive gear with this eccentric. I also found that this there's a lot of play in this gear up and down. One could try to introduce a little shim to raise this up, perhaps reduce the amount of crunch. However, do realize that you're still messing with the engaged mesh dimension. So, you know, to some extent, you can probably arrange so that it is too far away from its drive gear. I guess just don't move that much. Maybe that's the solution.